right, y'all, we are back at you with a summer garden tour, right, guys? Yeah, this yeah. is the height of summer. Yeah, so we're in August right now. Um, we got a lot of stuff going off. Uh, we live in Central Florida, Zone 10A. Um, everything we do, all of our gardening is organic, um, even our grass. I don't use any chemicals on the lawn. I just water it when Mother Nature doesn't and mow it, and that's that's it. Um, we don't use chemicals on any of our other plants or edibles or anything we're about to show you. So um, We do have irrigation. We do have irrigation. It's, uh, it's a lifesaver for us because we yeah. live in a desert climate basically but um i uh i only run my irrigation when we're not getting rain i actually don't have it set on a timer i just turn it on when we haven't had rain for days so but anyways we got um a lot going off and we also have some stuff that we need to harvest so we're going to kind of use this as an excuse to harvest some stuff um we started down here i'll show you guys we have we started down here by all of our coconut palms because we just got tons of coconuts up here and I'm probably not gonna cut them all right now, but I'm definitely gonna get the ones off this tree. Um, you can see them up here. And then we have, geez, probably another 15 or 20 on that tree. I'll probably come back for those. Um, and then I noticed we also have some avocados up there that we need to harvest. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand the camera over to Annalisa and we'll cut a couple of these coconuts out. And then uh, maybe she, maybe you guys can meet us, meet me up by the avocado tree, and I'll yeah. cut some of those out. Too. Sounds good. We got some good-looking flowers on this tree. Like a bunch of little baby coconuts coming out. Woo! Woo! A forfer. You know, I don't want to saw at these all day, so I'm going right. to stop at these four. Oh, we got four. Honestly, I just wanted to get a couple because we went to the beach today and I want some coconut water. So I'm going to lug these up to the house. All right. Once you guys, uh, we'll, we'll show the mango doing the trees tour, and, and I'll stuff. meet you over by the avocado tree. All right. Well, here's our, so we planted those coconuts down there. Um, they're already taller than Reese. I don't know, two years ago. Um, the water table is really low right here. So I think that helps the, the coconuts grow a little quicker back here versus the front of our yard. We have so many coconuts in our yard and every, they all, those coconuts, they turn brown and they sprout. Yeah. Into plants. Yeah. And this tree actually bent from like hurricanes and, and things. And the bestest part about this tree is that you can walk up and down Okay, let's tree you can't climb up. All right, let's go look at the mango trees. So we have the fence too. So, so along this fence here, we have... Tea plants, dragon fruit, and some dragon trees. This dragon fruit almost looks like it was starting to flower here. Here's some more, um, I think this is red, red sister. Lady. Red sister. Um, then here's the um, shampoo variegated shampoo, shampoo ginger. Uh, it, it did have a shampoo. Bottle. It did, but I don't think it does anymore. Here's our mango trees. Um, probably need to prune them, but we're worried. I feel like the storms kind of do it for us. We got a bunch of crabs that dig holes in here. Here's our gumbo limbo trees. Yes. Yeah, we find ice Indian pottery in our yard, and the crabs dig them all up. Yeah, and speaking of crabs, I saw a school a school of one over there. You did? Yeah. Cool. An exoskeleton, maybe. Here's a um, oh, staghorn yeah. fern that we have growing on this uh, gumbo limbo tree. We didn't plant this, but it's awesome. We love it. I gave one little piece to my mother-in-law, and she, I think it's still alive. Here's another gumbo limbo tree. It's just has such pretty bark. And it's fun to climb. They lose their leaves a lot and the squirrels and birds just love the berries. It's a good it, one it, for actually the squirrels take the berries over the mangoes. Yeah, they do seem so to that prefer times, them. It times right. 
Yeah, and it, and it seems to be around the same time as the mangoes too. We've got the orange bird of paradise over here. This is kind of like in front of our pool area. And we have a um, plumeria, frangipani. Here's some, pic this is just the yellow kind. Here's some flowers. We have the orange bird of paradise. I love the orange bird of paradise. It's such a pretty flower. Look at all the stuff on this African blue basil. There's bees and butterflies. Yeah. This is a really nice one to plant to get more pollinators to attract more to come to your yard. I've got a little kunti back there, which is the host plant for the Atala butterfly. And it's usually pretty loaded with caterpillars. This is a, a sea grape hedge we have that was already here. Yeah. We have another yellow plumeria. Yeah. I think it's, there's, it's flowering up there. And some aloe. We have lots of different kinds of aloe over here. Yeah, we've got a couple different kinds of aloe. Here's a different kind of aloe. There's like a stump of yucca that I just chucked there. I think we're going to bring that up to Blairsville and plant it. Here's um, a coon tea. And There's here... There's a tall butterfly drying its wings. Look at that. We've got an Atala butterfly right there. Oh, I scared it away. Bummer. Maybe it'll lay down again because I think it's drying its wings. So it'll probably land again. Yeah. Here's some Dracaena. Did you see it land? It's landed over there. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Let's see. Let's leave it alone. Yeah. Is that it? No. Anyways, yeah. here is our green song of India. The little tea plant next to it. Some bromeliads. Alright, sorry guys. I... Oh, it's alright. I went inside and drank a coconut. <laughs> Let's grab some of these uh, avocados out of the tree. Yeah, you have to really pull these down. I think we... Dinosaur eggs. Yeah, they do look like dinosaur eggs. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, well, three there. All right, a I think three. that's all we should pick for now. Okay. Because I don't want to pick more than we can eat. Yeah, yeah don't... so these will get even bigger, too. Uh -huh. We're just, we're going to pick them so we can, you know, we don't have a whole giant harvest of them all at once. Yeah, because so. they're big. Like, yeah, our family can eat one. one pretty big. It's all right. They can get huge. That one right there. Look how big that one is. Oh, and I see one way up there. That's oh, giant. Oh, right. Let's see if you I can get that one. Yeah. I'm going to get that one. Okay. There? Yeah. All right. Here you go, Ted. I mean, we'll eat them. Yeah. I kind of miss avocados because they've gotten so darned expensive. I kind of, right. kind of, I'm going without them. Oops. They're they're kind of tough to get. You gotta really yank them. That one's not huge. So this is probably the biggest yeah, one we got right the there. One. Nice. They'll get almost as big as a uh, medium-sized pineapple. Uh huh. We've gotten some big ones. So. And they're ready to eat when you can feel the um, or when you shake it. Yeah. The nut will. You can shake move it around. around. And, yeah. You can feel the nut rattling around in there. Alright guys, I'm gonna bring these in. You guys can keep going. Um, I'm gonna go get my putter from down there. I might try and go get some more coconuts while you guys continue. So we think this is a choquette, but I'm not quite sure. Right. It was here when we moved in and like so it goes from here all the way up there. It's a really big avocado tree and this has been a good year for us. Um, I mean there must be probably a hundred avocados up there so uh, you can't really see them. They're really camouflaged because they're the exact same color as the leaves, but they're up there. Um, and that's super exciting because last year we, we got some, but not as many as we have this year. And we had kind of a disappointing mango year, so I'm happy that we're getting a bunch of avocados. All right. Well, here is kind of like where we put all of our free plants that we pick up off the curb. Yeah, the um, plant pirates. Yeah. For our plant pirate series. Um, and so we've just kind of stuck in some bromeliads and dracaenas and we have put in a bunch of cassava. Um, so we have cassava there, there, and there. And those were just cuttings that we cut off of the one cassava plant we started with last year. 
And that one plant turned into probably eight different ones. Yeah. Um, and that one grows really easily here. It's a nice banana rack right there. I think those are just about ready to pick. And then I noticed we got a new flower right there. Yeah. And these are the bananas that Came were original that um, were already here when we, when we moved in. That's a tiny flower. Yep, it's whittled all the way down to this tiny little flower. They start out giant like that one. And then, let's see, over here, the button ginger looks really pretty. These we started from cuttings um, a little over a year ago and you, there's no signs of old sticks from our plant pirating. Usually when we put the free sticks or cuttings in the ground, it takes a little while for them to rejuvenate. But this looks really pretty right now. Right here we have a cacao plant um, tree. And I don't know, it's it's probably three or four years old. It lost all of its leaves in the winter. Yeah, it loses its leaves in the winter and then it seems to keep coming back. Which is kind of funny because we're in like a subtropical zone that it would lose its leaves in the winter. Well, some of the, a lot of the fruit stuff does, but I don't know, it might be too cold here for that plant, but it keeps, it keeps staying alive. So we're gonna just keep going with it. This is Red Sister. Those were here when we moved in. Here's a little bromeliad that's ready to split. There's two here. Some variegated ginger back here. We have a papaya. And then inside here we have our, our, dwarf, our dwarf red is flowering. That's exciting. Yeah. That's the gold finger. And the gold finger. I didn't notice well, that. Whoa. That one's probably not even a year old yeah. since we planted it. Oh, the, the dwarf red has a nice, some nice pups. Yeah, it's got some good spear suckers. All right, <clears throat> what do we have over here? Um, we have this sang raha that has bananas. Yep, we got this sang raha ban banana that has little tiny bananas right there. I think this one right here is gonna shoot us a flower soon too. Some little bromeliads, Actually, oyster plant. This is a pop off of this one. Is it? Yeah. Cause, oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, here's some tea plant. This is the black magic. Black magic tea plant. We have some shampoo ginger here. Oyster plant, corn palm. This, there's some variegated Hawaiian shampoo ginger. There's some variegated Hawaiian shampoo ginger. We got this from, um, I think there were roots on the cuttings that we collected um, off the curb, but that was a prize. It's Hawaiian variegated shampoo ginger. And here's some regular shampoo ginger. We put lots of that around. This is where we rinse off by the pool. And let's see, that, here's um, this basil plant that, that is, was planted by a bird or a squirrel or we some other kind it. of wildlife. We didn't plant it here and it just grew up to be all Yeah, and it's like one of the healthiest ones I've ever had. So maybe there's something to it. Um, need a, needs a little more, more shade than what I've been doing in our garden. Here, is this the chili pepper or is this um, red sister? I think that's, that's chili pepper, not red little, sister. Okay, and then this is a pretty bromeliad here. It gets pretty big and winds around. Yeah. And then some aloe and then bunch of other bromeliads here with a crinum lily there which will get huge and then we got more bananas lots and lots of bananas finally yeah um here's a pretty like caladium yeah. type plant some more bromeliads so oh this is like oh this is a lobster claw okay. yeah um uh, heliconia heliconia very good um this is pink diamond tea plant this, this is, is uh, banana we collected. This is that blood October. banana or zebra banana that we collected um, in someone's landscape debris pile. Um, it needs to rejuvenate, but I think it's going to make it. Oh, it's a different kind that we didn't have yet. Here's yeah. a big philodendron kind of winding around this such gumbo cool limbo roots. tree. And we've got all these gumbo limbo trees. They're kind of cool. They're like dancing. 
leaning out. So another four hundred dead. These are said, "Whoa, look at these Cuban buttercups." Yep, here's some Cuban buttercups. We need to cut them back because they're taking over our Lego spinach. Yeah, we probably need to. But look, it's growing sideways. We've got lots sideways. of Lego spinach that have been popping up everywhere. I've got Lego spinach here. Oh, there's some even over here. Here's oh, wow. sisu spinach. Yeah, this whole area, I think we need to take all of this and cut it way back. Like Our moringa is flowering right now. Um, you can see up there, there's little flowers, little pale yellow flowers. Um, but that grows so viciously fast, it's amazing. There's these balls that kept, that grew here. Oh, the guavas. Yeah, the guavas. We've got guavas all up in this tree. Yeah, this is a pink guava. Four, five, six. I think we have about 30 in here. Seven, and eight. they're really good. We got oh, a few last year. It was the first year we had this tree planted. I'm holding this one. Nice. Yeah. And then we have some more greens back here. We've got longevity spinach. We've got chuck moringa. Which is a favorite of the kids. And it grows really well around these bananas. This is a blue java uh, banana. Oh. And this is a candarin banana. Yeah, I did. And this is an ever-bearing mulberry that's yeah. now finally starting to stop produce. But it's been giving us berries all year. And this. I think we need to trim it to get it to start this is from popping one, out more berries. One little top that I planted here like oh, a half a year, a year ago now. Yeah. It's uh And Cuban now the oregano. Cuban oregano is kind of taking over this yeah. wall here. But it's cool. It I is like cool. It. I love the like I love the Cuban oregano. You can make a good pesto with it. We have um Katuk, which is another this is like tastes like peanutty nutty. It tastes the best the new growth but and then it gets it, little berries that taste good too. Yeah the berries taste the best. And we have this salad plant here. I don't know. Stuff's just been eating it the whole time. Maybe it'll eventually start providing for us because it seems to take a little bit of time to get these hey, perennial spinaches going sometimes. Can you actually like eat these? Yeah, of course you can. That's the sisu. This one's really good. I, I haven't eat, eaten one piece of it in my life. Yeah, mm. over here. Eat it. It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> We have a giant right here. Lenny, there's a kunti, you can tell. Lots of caterpillars have already yeah, fed off of yeah, that. There's a, yeah, there's you a see one? down there. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. So here's... Oh look, and another one. Be careful. Be careful. Oh look, another it's one. got three cocoons down there. And there's another one right Nice. There. Those cocoons, we um, took one in to watch the whole process, and when they turn black is when you know you'll get a butterfly coming out that day. Wait, there's actually this two right here. Yeah, there's a ton of them. This so, is lemongrass. We have a big puffy thing of lemongrass, it's which I really love the way it looks. It's swallowing the grand name in this bromeliad. Yeah, we need to whack it back uh, all the time. Yeah. But um, it is, I really like the way, the texture that it adds. Um, so this is the grand name right banana. Um, what are you saying? The yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. The um that's the wedding bouquet. That is a really pretty they flower. They have tons up Can here. I pick and this? They, sure. they group into like the ones up there, they group into what looks like a wedding bouquet. Yeah. That yeah, they're really pretty. And they they don't lose their leaves in the winter like the other plumerias do. Here's kind of just like a a messy patch of wild flowers, some porterweed and blanket flower. Cuban buttercup. Cuban buttercup. Um, wild coffee, um, milkweed, just a whole jumble of things. This, this is a, uh, we have a miracle fruit right there, and we got a nice harvest. Yeah, year. we did get a nice harvest. This was the first year we got fruit off of our miracle fruit tree. Um, I think it's pretty happy here. I like it. It's pretty it. protected. Yeah. We have a nice big bush here of uh, rosemary. We use that all the time. This is a Mysore banana. This is a Mysore banana. We have nice good looking rack up there yeah that's a long one the, those are good small little ones the, this is a Peru, this is a peruvian white do you want to pick it that's right the now. first one we've gotten it's ready to pick it's a, are you sure we might want it we may have wanted to 
let it turn a little more yellow. That's what but I it's, think. It's pretty brown. You sure? Yep, go for it. Pick it. How are we going to learn when, when's the right time to pick it? Looked right to me. Then we'll just bring it in and wait for it to start smelling really good. Don't drop it. <laughs> All right. Back here we have a bunch of pineapples and jasmine, confederate jasmine. Here's our other guava with some green onions. Here's more of the African, African blue basil. Blue basil. Um, we, we have to kind of rejuvenate this stuff. After like a year or two, it gets kind of like, this is probably on its end. It just gets really dead and underneath like this and gets messy looking. So at this point, I just cut little pieces off and stick them in the ground. And we did that over here where we pulled one out because um, after a while the bees and stuff don't even seem as attracted to them. So, but when you first plant them, they seem like the bees come from all over to see, to come and pollinate the flowers. So, so these are all my sores. So these are all uh, praying hands. And these are praying hands. It's a nice rack right there. Those are delicious. They grow kind of fused together, kind of a funky looking banana, but they're really good and they're really big and tall and they have giant leaves. Yeah, I love like this seven, banana. Whoa, that leaf is like seven feet long. Yeah. So, so what, what I was about to tell, tell you, one time I was standing around here in the garden and I saw black bees eating the pineapples. Yeah? Yeah, there's black bees eating the raw pineapples. Yeah? Oh, look yeah. at this flower. They're like look, landing look, on them. On Reese's pepper. I wonder if oh, it was. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. So that's not a pepper. This is Florida spinach. Oh. This is another good edible you can I eat. I thought it was a pepper. Mm -hmm. That one tastes really good, too. The, this is our crazy Cuban oregano. And here's our Cuban oregano it's again. Uh, I know. Taking over the garden. These are um, our ice cream bananas. Here's our Mona Lisa bananas. And these are all little Mona Lisa bananas. This is kind of like a medium one. It's real prolific. We get a lot of fruit off that one. This is the double Mahoe. Apparently this one's supposed to give us two racks of bananas. I will have to wait and see. That yeah. plant is so old. It's a, uh, let's see, probably. Three years old. It's as old as those and we've probably gotten. Three generations, four generations. <laughs> yeah, at least. So that one's a slow grower. Um, we've got more Cuban oregano, pagoda flower, seems to do really well with the heat over here. We have a, let's see, a fig tree that looks yeah. terrible. It's getting it has inundated figs. by. It has disgusting figs. Yeah, there's yeah. some figs right here. No, those are the buds for the um, Cuban oregano, or Cuban buttercup. Here we have the um, flowers, the elderberry. It's not real prolific, but I am slowly collecting berries from this. They're real small. Oh, but yeah. this is the first year we've gotten fruit. So these little balls right there will be the next ones that will turn to that'll turn blue. Here is our dwarf Orinoco. This is another rack that's almost ready. Here's our beauty berry. So pretty. All the different shades of purple. And a beautiful croton super happy here. Milkweed. You got all kinds of stuff growing in here. Got this kunti has obviously been providing lots of life to the Atala butterflies. Super cool. Here's a, oh, I think we're going to go through this way. Here's a variegated tea plant. Wow. Let's go up through here. nice thing of vincas right here yeah that was like i think five plants in the same spot no i think we just put one there maybe two i think it was a couple here's our curbside finds jumbled up mesh of plants it's slowly starting to come around the it's such a hot cool. hot place for the plants but all right let's go this way Here's our messy little potting area. Potting area. Random, yeah, random cuttings. 
We haven't gotten in the ground yet. Here's our, here's our. Here's all of our uh, the, airplane. Uh, the airplane. Yeah. Talancia collection. And uh, Talancias are in the Vermilion family. Yes. As you can tell, I mean, look at them. They look exactly like Vermilions. Yeah, and they don't need soil. Here's a Monstera deliciosa. Some vermilion. Um, yeah, this there's Exora. The Song of India. Variegated. Variegated Song of India. Red lobster claw. And this is, we only found these once this in a curbside pile. Yeah, it's we did. It's a variegated corn plant. They're really cool. Oh yeah, this was an interesting find. It's a variegated corn plant. I thought it was like a crazy tea a plant. Yucca. But looking at the Fan trunk. Fanet yucca. Uh, peppermint swirl tea plant. Peppermint swirl tea plant. I don't know about this guy. I feel like what it's shrunk mean? since we planted oh, it. Yeah. But look at this. But, yeah. I think it was always always there. Let's go over here. Our, our saw palms. Some more vermilion. Another one of those precious pink diamonds tea plants. We only have four. So. And here's another little display of vermilion along with this beautiful big giant one here. And believe it or not, we got this on the side of the road. I this know, size. that was on the side of the road. Who would throw that out? I know, it's giant. Beautiful. Some more vermilion. Let's walk through these oh, trees. Oh, our neighbor Pat, our neighbor gave us a uh, Oh this, yeah, there, this is like a nice this one. Is this is a little mini snake, plant. mini snake plant here. It's really cool. Yeah, and it's spreading nicely. They had a good little ground cover there. Right next to them. Oh, let's go back. Yeah. I was gonna cut off over here, but this is looking good. Teddy and his brother. Well, I think Teddy was the only yeah. one that did it, but, oh, but I planted, planted sweet, a bunch. Of, I planted sweet potatoes everywhere. Yeah. So, um, from there. Oh wow, these are sweet potatoes. I'm yeah. gonna eat a leaf. Yeah, you can eat nothing's, the leaves. Nothing's gotten to these yet. That's why this spot is so precious. Honestly, no, I planted them here in years past and, and stuff got them. Oh. So since they cleared that lot over there, the rats that we were having trouble with um, seem to have dissipated quite a bit. And we don't seem to be having the issues that we used to have yeah. with everything getting eaten. So, um, you know, it's good and bad, the bright side. And we have, um, sweet potatoes now which is awesome there's some porter weed there some spiral ginger and then this is like a big giant cluster of um, chaya that we planted which is an edible spinach that you have to boil first before you eat it but um, it grows so well and it has really pretty white flowers it's that also, the butterflies really it's like it's also known as a spinach tree because it gets as big as a tree yes it does they get pretty big probably like 12 15 feet tall Here's another Dracaena, which, what is this one called? The yeah. Auntie Lou? Uh, Auntie Lou, yes. Auntie Lou tea plant. Uh, more bromeliads. Here's a little one of the variegated corn palm. Kind of cool. It's feeling a little weak though. We'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Bunch of no more little bromeliads here. Over here we have a carambola, which is a star fruit. This is the carry. Um, we have a moldy paddle plant that we need to figure out why that's happening. Penta tea plant. That's the Thousand Fingers banana. It's one of the newer ones we've collected. A purple crinum lily. Oh. A beautiful purple um, bromeliad. Don't forget about the. And oh, then then this is the the ornamental. Um, Pineapple plant. Here's some more of that ornamental um, or the variegated Hawaiian ginger. And, yeah, there was a double. There's a uh, there was a tiny banana around here, but I don't know where it is. Oh, we moved them. The oh. Huamoas. We had two Huamoa bananas here that were small and they weren't doing great, so we dug them up and put them in pots, and they're doing oh, better. Lizard egg. Lizard egg. Oh, look at that. A lizard egg. I leave it, leave it alone. This had some beautiful blooms on it. This Fiesta hibiscus. It's okay. We're not the best with hibiscuses. Let's see. Got a few little bromeliads we sprinkled in there. Some more bromeliads here. 
Here is sweet sunrise passion fruit. Sweet sunrise passion fruit. It's already gone all the way to the top of the tree, so we'll probably get fruit on that next year. I think our pomegranate it's just about bit the dust. We need to move that into more sun. Some other little there's the um heliconia that we got on the side of the road. Here so this um pomegranate's in a little more sun and it's a little happier. But it looks uh, like the yeah, look at his the leaves. um <laughs> the leaf, leaf cutter cutter bee. the leaf cutter the bee bee. likes that type of leaf a lot, I guess. Here's a bunch of philodendrons. And this area along the Riga palms that Brent planted, um, we kind of just kind of throw in a whole bunch of random things that we find collected from the curb. So, and then we kind of move it out into different beds. So it's kind of like a little nursery. Yeah, it's kind of just like when we can't find a place for it yet, it goes there. But sometimes it ends up doing good and we'll just leave it. Wow, look how high But we have, yeah, look, this passion fruit's We're finally Panama taking red hold. Panama red. And then we have a, a sweetheart, sweetheart lychee. Here are a couple of uh, red lady papayas that I grew from seed. Here's a longan that I got from some lady that seemed really good with fruit trees, but I don't know, it's not looking great. Um, this is the jade pothos, that's a unique one that we collected. Spiral ginger. Here's another kind of banana. I can't think of the name. We really need to get labels for some of these bananas. Yeah. I have it for most of them. And then here's more philodendrons with little aloes and other like little tropical. What's this? The Chinese evergreen we collected. That's the, uh, yeah. Kind of popping up through here. Here's a little fig tree. Hoping to survive. Here's a nice um, star fruit. Another Ark and Carambola. So hopefully we'll get those going soon. We just got a small vert. Yeah? Yeah. Let's see. Cool. It's probably from like a snake. Yes. Yeah, yeah, small you think? snake. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Should That's I a good it? find. No. Let's put it on our nature table. Let's go over here. Skips a little part yeah, here. Yeah. What? Yeah, we haven't gone over here yet. So we kind of have like a bunch of like bromeliads. Uh, I don't know what that's like a type of century plant. It's really cool though. It's huge. And it was just like that when we got it on the curb. Yeah. We've got some gingers growing in there. So hopefully those will get big and kind of like flow in between those two cabbage palms. More of the Auntie Lou. I love this Auntie Lou. It, it, um, seems to grow really bushy and um, cool. it when you put sticks of it in the ground it seems to barely go through any shock. Yeah, never. I think that's one of my favorites. That's yeah. a good one. Got some little pentas. Lots and lots of lizards. Lots and lots of lizards. Pineapples. Here's some Mysore bananas. We have a sugar apple here. It had flowers on it for a long time, probably a couple months. Um, I, pro I probably should have pollinated them, hand pollinated them, but I didn't have any issue. I didn't have any luck with the pollination, so maybe I'll try to plant some of that um, blue African basil yeah. around it next year. Another banana, another banana, corn palm dracaena, and monstera. Kind of planted funky. Or, Hoping it'll look cool at the base though of these live oaks here. Don't forget this stuff. Yeah. Here's probably our best looking monstera. Super cool looking plant. It's starting to climb. Oh, well, I thought this was a flower. Yeah, me too. And then here's our strawberry tree. Strawberry tree. Here's oh oh. I want oh, you it. can have it. Oh, there's lots on the ground. Yeah, I see the squirrels coming over here and eating them. So good. Here's its flower. Gives us fruit basically year round. Maybe a couple months we don't get it.
Yeah, we don't get it. Here's Exora. This is the Thai black banana. And then that's the Saba. Saba banana. And some vermilions. Lots of sprouted coconuts. And like a coconut border here. And here's their fort. It's more like Monstera and Dracaena. Oh, yep, strawberry fruit. Here's one of the best hibiscuses we have. Must be yeah, it's still living and doing good. Wish I wasn't so terrible with these. They are so pretty. We have a avocado. Here's a crinum lily, but look, this avocado has a whole new flush of leaves. That's exciting. It's a good looking avocado. Hopefully one day we'll have big avocados. More lot, big avocados. More big avocados. Here's some frangipani or plumeria, all different colors, I believe, that we've collected. And then purple crinum lilies, all kind of in between those. And then, let's see, we've got some button ginger that we just got going. Probably need to trim this up a little bit. Well, this is interesting because look, plumeria is just getting its leaves back from winter. No, this was the one that we just planted. Oh. Like a week ago, we pulled all the leaves off. Yeah, I see. And um, I think we need to cut it right there. There's a little bit of rot. But other than that, it's ready. It'll just bush out and you'll never even know that it was just a cutting. Here's a cool vermilion. Wow, I love that. Yeah, me too. We've got lots of cocoa plums. I don't like cocoa plums. Oh, they're not bad. They don't really taste like much. If you were hungry, you could eat them. They're probably yeah. pretty good for you. They're kind of hidden. Mm hmm. Whoa. There's some yeah, big look ones. Oh, those, well, those are going to be big. And here's our sour sop tree. It's getting some scale, I see. We need to trim it and watch it. All right, we are behind the, in the dog's yard. We've got, this looks like a black magic almost, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Cause look, the new leaf is green. Yeah, so that's I think awesome. that's a black, yeah. Black magic tea plant. When we found it, I thought it was. This is a pure white um, plumeria. It's not a wedding bouquet. Not a wedding bouquet, not a yellow one. Uh, red sister. Another bromeliad. This we just kind of threw a bunch of stuff in here. The chili pepper, tea plant, wedding bouquet, bayonet yucca, tall mamma, plumeria. Tall mamma. This is the tall namwa, the original one we bought. Well, Didn't is... make it, but that's okay. It gave us an offspring, this, so look at this Roger Perry. It'll it has a continue flower. living. Look, the Roger Perry has a flower. Yeah. Yeah, we saw it the other day. Now, this is like a short, fat banana called the Raja Puri. That's a big flower. It's its first flower. So Look, that's, that's a big flower. Yeah. Hopefully that means lots of bananas. Another little plumeria. This is our purple um, sugar cane. Some chefalera bushes. Big, giant banana bunches. I think that's a Saba. Part. Yeah, we think it's either Saba. I think it looks like a tall Orinoco. Looks like the Orinoco type bananas. This is our mandarin uh, tree that we planted when we first moved in, and we've never once gotten a single fruit off of it. Not even a flower. But I've gotten some swallowtail butterflies, so that's kind of cool. Here are a bunch of bromeliads and vincas and, and um, plumeria. And then I planted a little volunteer elderberry right here so i'm hoping that that will kind of fill up this wall and then the lacatan banana more of the new banana we picked up the other day which is just an ornamental it's called the blood banana we think here's another coconut we don't get coconuts off this one yet but i think next year or the year after will be it'll probably be at the point where we can get it we got three passion fruits yesterday, but I don't see too many other ones in there. So I think this uh, purple passion fruit's kind of at its end. We've got some random 
pieces of dragon fruit growing up in here too. Who knows if that was a, those guys will work together or not. They're kind of a different like texture plant. So I don't know, but they both seem pretty prolific. So hopefully they'll do well. Here's some more cassava, a bunch more bromeliads, Cuban oregano, another guava tree. This is a pink guava. Back here in this tomato cage, we have a nice stand of Okinawan spinach, which is another really good one for salads. And some kachuk right there. That one tastes so good. Lots of dragon fruits growing up these cabbage palms. And then I think this is about it right here. Yeah. We've got some crinum lilies. The sweet or this is our sweetheart claw. bananas. Prized lobster claw. Our prized lobster claw. This is a, a red penta. penta. No, uh, this is the dwarf eye holina. Yeah. And then this one is the Lacatan, the big one for that fell over. We planted it got knocked over, over by, by a behind tornado. the fence. Yeah, we had like a tornado rip our screen up. And and here's a loquat that we just planted that I think we need to open up a little more space for it, cut back this plumeria a little bit. But anyways, I think that kind of wraps it up. Oh wait, we didn't do over here. Our Brogdon avocado here, we planted this when we first moved in. And it's probably like tripled in size. So this is exciting. I think we might get fruit on this one next year. We got some more chaya started right here. Button ginger. And which one is this? This is the dwarf namwa? Dwarf. Banana? Yeah, this is the green tea plant. We have green tea plant. The apple. This is the apple. And the rhino horn is apple. And this is the rhino horn banana. And some more, this is some more of the African blue basil, but yeah, because it's in the shade. Shampoo. Oh, oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, it doesn't have any more shampoo yeah, in I it. Yeah, I think it's too old. <laughs> but there's the flower for the shampoo. Ginger. And a cicada exoskeleton on it. <laughs> cool. Well, all right, guys. I think that about wraps it up. So um, thank you guys for coming along with us on another garden tour. It's August, and we hope you guys enjoyed walking around with us. And um, if you liked our videos it'd be awesome if you guys hit that thumbs up button or press subscribe and if they don't press subscribe what's gonna happen to them yeah uh, they're they're gonna fall off the empire state building oh what's gonna happen to them they're gonna get hit in the head by a lead bowling ball <laughs> i'm not as good as daddy but anyways thanks you thanks you guys and we'll see you next time